Give me a go. Give it a second. All right. Good morning. Hello. Welcome everybody to another live chat here on Next Up Social Channel. I am Richelli Wright Wilson, and as always, I'm joined by Juwan Buford. Um, and today we're going to be talking about mental health. Um, specifically the growing or more apparent issue of um, anxiety and depression within entrepreneurs. But before we jump into it, if you're watching with us here, either live or on the replay, please make sure you hit that subscribe button here on the channel so you never miss an interview alive or anything, any of the incredible discussions we have here at Next Stop Social. We also want to clarify that everything we go over is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> um, so... Um, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Building a business is not easy. Being your own boss is not easy. And the stress of being an entrepreneur absolutely has the ability and it probably will take a huge psychological toll on your mental health um, and well-being. doesn't really matter if you're new in business or you've been in business a long time, if you're doing well financially or if you're not doing well financially. These problems sneak up on you whether things on the surface appear to be going well or not. Um, and I'm glad that we're talking about this today because, you know, entrepreneurship, especially on the, uh, the Google version, the Google outlook is glorified, right? Especially when we look at people who are have incredible success stories and it's, and, and we do, we, we also are here to, to celebrate success, but we do want to, you know, and it's fine to do that but we don't want to be ignorant to ignoring secret demons that every entrepreneur is going to face at some level or another, you know, sometimes it's debilitating anxiety or complete and utter self doubt, um, depression at a level that right now, maybe you can't even imagine. And while this year has certainly heightened our awareness and willingness to be more vocal about these things, it's not, it's still not talked about enough. Um, so, you know, starting a business and running a business takes an incredible amount of determination and motivation, and it also comes with a huge amount of risk and the stress of that risk can manifest into all kinds of unhealthy ways. And there's this underlying sense as an entrepreneur that you're supposed to be remain uplifted, tough and able to handle and get through anything. But I think it's just so important to remember that we are also still human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm glad we're having this conversation. And, you know, as I shared before previously, Rochelle, I've been having more and more discussions with individuals about depression, right? And, you know, over the last year, I've talked to several entrepreneurs um, who've actually, you know, mentioned the word suicide in our discussion. You know, I've talked to individuals who have people around them um, where they've taken losses, right? People who've committed suicide that are friends of theirs. And, um, in my regular discussions, more and more, I'm finding myself spending more time, uh, not necessarily trying to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but really just listening in real closely and intently to make sure that people are okay. You know, um, and of course, it, you know, you'd be foolish not to believe that the pandemic hasn't already acerbated these situations that were occurring on a regular basis anyway, you know. I couldn't help, as always, to do a little bit of research, you know, to do a little bit of a deep dive on any of the content we talk about. And I was blown away. I mean, I was blown away by how completely unaware I was personally of how serious an issue this is. Like, I had no idea that suicide was the third leading cause of death among the young. I didn't know that, right? Um, the fact that it is the 10th leading cause of death um, across the board, right? When you think of all the different things that can happen to you, suicide um, being that. And of course, you know, the data wasn't very specific even two or three years ago, but what was available was mind boggling to me. And there's no reason not to believe that these numbers have actually gotten worse. Um, 
And, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, people have mis have their preconceived notions about what entrepreneurship is and what the entrepreneur life is really all about and stresses and strains that you're going to have to deal with, right? A lot of times it's just broken down to that common denominator of success of hard work. Um, but we don't talk about the psychology of entrepreneurship. And for me, what was very enlightening as I was looking at the data and doing the research was I firmly believe that you can't help a person so they can identify the issue themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, you, you hit the nail on the head. Number one, we have this thing where we really don't want to admit fealty. We don't want to, we don't want to admit weakness or we want, don't want to admit the fact that we may be struggling sometimes, right? It's kind of part of your DNA. I'm going to get it done no matter what, right? I, there's a goal, there's an objective. I got, I go through it, around it, under it. It's just going to get done. Um, but it was interesting to me to understand how some of the same strengths, the same attitudes, the same characteristics that are, that are strengths when it comes to being an entrepreneur can also be very um, dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm thinking about some of these things. For instance, you know, entrepreneurs, we have uh, a tendency to be very, uh, we, we isolate a lot, right? Because we need to do that oftentimes. You need to be alone with your thoughts. You need to be alone with your internal compass. You got to listen to yourself speak and kind of block out all the noise, right? Um, because at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, I mean, you have to have confidence in you. It's an inside job. But of course, the danger of that is what happens when you are in a really depressed space, when you are really um, not necessarily feeling good about not what's going on, not only what's going on around you, but you're not feeling good about yourself. Well, that tendency to isolate can become very problematic, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, that was eye-opening to kind of view it that way and, and look at it that way. Um, the fact that entrepreneurs, there's a degree of thought, of course, and, and a depth of understanding is required to be an entrepreneur. There's a lot of thinking that's involved, but oftentimes there's a lot of impulse decisions that are made too, right? I call them blink decisions. Whereas an entrepreneur, you get to a point where you begin to have a filter and you begin to see things through that filter in terms of what's for you and what's not for you. And you find the most successful entrepreneurs, they have that worked out so well in terms of their lives, what they expect, what they desire, what the outcomes are. They're able to make blink decisions, right? And when you were making what I refer to as blink decisions, I picked this up, by the way, in um, Malcolm um, Gladwell's book, Blink, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're a person that makes blink decisions, it also on the flip side means you gotta have the utmost confidence in your decisions, right? Um, you gotta be willing to see things through. And once again, as I was doing the research and, and, and looking at these issues, I saw some of those rather interesting that a, a lot of entrepreneurs, and I even recognize it in myself, um, have symptoms that are very similar to ADD, right? Yes. Um, and I was, as I was looking at the characteristics of people who have ADD, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Later. that's important. I, I mean, we've talked about this before, but it was about yeah. a couple months ago that I started getting tested for ADHD. Um, yeah. And that's something I would never have classified yeah. myself with. But mm -hmm. there's things like your ability to hyper focus and yeah. go through these, you know, bouts of just blind work like you just all you do is work like that is also a symptom uh, there you know of course we're not like adhd can look like a million different things but right. but it is extremely common in entrepreneurs yep you know the restlessness mm -hmm. right the, the, the thinking all the time the, the inquisitiveness and not to the struggle to shut your brain down it's like i literally have to sit for periods of time mm -hmm. and be like okay juan stop thinking just stop <laughs> so, um, but that, that also, there's some impulsiveness there too, right? When you, when you get focused on something, you get focused on it and it's like, it's all encompassing, right? Um, well, what happens when you're isolated and you're feeling some kind of way about yourself and hundred percent of your focus are on those things that, that can make for a real dangerous situation, right? Um, you know, I preach about this all the time, the ideal of you can't put yourself in a situation where you're living for other people's opinions, thoughts, and perspectives, right? Um, it's a kiss of death for an entrepreneur to be so concerned about what other people are thinking and what other people are saying and this, that, and other, that you won't make the moves you need to make to be successful, right? You won't 
put yourself in a situation where um, you're, you're not willing to go through the ugly duckling stage, right? But just because we know that to be true doesn't mean we always follow that advice, right? And part of being an entrepreneur is knowing the eyeballs are on you. You're being observed, you're being watched, whether it be by vendors, clients, competition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes, you know, you hit the nail on the head. We as entrepreneurs, we don't want to show weakness. We don't want to show cracks in the armor, if you will. And once again, that becomes a problem, right? Because when you're in a sunken kind of place like that, you almost need somebody to interject. You almost need someone to pull you to the side and say, look, what's going on? You know, what's happening here? Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And you have to be willing to share that, right? If that's where you're at. And so for me, it was fascinating to kind of really sit back and think about how the entrepreneurial lifestyle really, I don't want to say it like this, but I think there's a lot of truth to it. It almost makes you more susceptible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You it's know, the- yeah, you talk, you've talked about this too. And you talked about it as well as like, it's not that people can't find a balance between work and life as an entrepreneur. I know lots of people who feel that they've got a really good handle on that, but you and I have talked about extensively if we don't believe there's any such thing as a work-life balance when you are mm-hmm. like truly a work-life balance when you're an entrepreneur and mostly be, even if you do stop working, you, this is your done working. Good luck. Stop think to stop thinking about it. I dream about it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not the, like at no point, is my brain ever totally disconnected from my, my work. Right. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, that's, you know, a big part of why I also believe that your work, you're choosing to be an entrepreneur because your work is your life and your life is your work, you know? And so the, why are we trying to draw all these definitive lines around it? I think the other thing is too, um, of, of entrepreneurs being more susceptible to extreme anxiety and depression and things like that. And, and not um, being uh, comfortable speaking about it is because you made this choice. You made Mm. this choice to do this and you start second guessing yourself and feeling bad about it or, or something's not going well. And you feel like, well, I can't say anything because this was my choice. I decided to do this. I Mm -hmm. have to figure it out and and that spirals so much faster <laughs> into a negative space um when you feel that it's your responsibility all the time you mm-hmm. know it's just a heavy and i think even even more so especially if you're in charge of employee if you're in charge of other people's income and livelihoods that spirals even faster Right. Mm-hmm. Because now you're responsible for other people's well-being. And um, so, yeah, it's it's dangerous and then also way too easy to get to that state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about some of the conversations I've had with folks. Right. And there's always this underlying theme of helplessness and hopelessness. Right. Um, a feeling of being trapped in your circumstances. Right. A feeling of I can't see any way out A feeling. That, and we know, right, they say fear is false expectations um, appearing real. Right. But when you're in the midst of it, it feels very real. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where you can be talking to a person one moment and they're in a real be transparent, shitty kind of way um, about everything around them. The circumstances haven't changed. But because their thinking is different or their head is in a different place, the final day, everything's all good, right? It's, it's like one of those things that oftentimes we don't see the world for really what it is. We see the world for where we are up here. What's going on up here determines what we see, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think part of this discussion is so important because if you're an you have to recognize the symptoms. Right. You have to recognize the triggers. You have to develop not only a knowledge of self, but understand the forces that are acting on you and the way the the mind and and, and your emotions can work as an entrepreneur so you can identify the troubles when they're on their way, right? Mm -hmm. So you can take action. What we don't want is a situation where you get to a sunken place, you're isolated, and then even worse things start to happen, right? 
Um, and then it's important for those of us who are entrepreneurs because birds of a feather flock together, that we recognize it when we talk to other individuals who are entrepreneurs as well, that we're able to identify, okay, this person's doing A, B, C, and D. I know what this sounds like. I know, let me find a way to have a conversation with them, afford some information to their attention so they can take action, right? But we don't want a situation where people have to hit rock bottom, right? Um, sometimes rock bottom is necessary, but not, you don't want to hit, be hitting rock bottom emotionally and psychologically. That's not the place you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's part of the reason why I really wanted to have this discussion because a lot of the entrepreneurs I talk to, even including myself, you know, you, you may be there and not even realize it. It's like people who are on the break of a nervous breakdown, right? They're running and running and running and running. And the moment they sit down long enough to take a breath, it's like, oh, snap. I've really run myself to the ground. <laughs> Look at me, you know. Um, the, the same thing can happen here. Um, and so, of course, as always, if we're going to talk about what the issues are, you know, what are the solutions? Like, what are the things that people can do? And once again, we are not psychologists. We are not medical professionals. <laughs> we're not medical practitioners. Mm -hmm. In other words, seek the medical professional treatment that you need from people who specialize in this area. Um, you know, professionals specialize, right? You wouldn't contact a foot doctor, operate on your brain, catch my drift, right? Mm -hmm. So find those individuals who actually do this for a living and actually certify. But there's a couple, I think, general things that people can do to number one, avoid some of these pitfalls or at least ameliorate these situations when they occur. And, you know, something that I encourage people to do all the time, and I was really on this kick several months ago, I'm still on it, and that's health, yeah. right? Um, look, you're going to have sleepless nights. I'm not going to front. There are still periods where I, I pull an 18, 20 hour uh, work day. I don't even, what do, you, do you even call that a day? You just call it a 20 hour straight because the day is running to you at that point. There are periods where you have to burn for 20 hours straight, right? But you must, must, must get your rest. You have to, if, even if it's just two, three hour nap, something, you got to do something to recharge yourself. You don't want to run yourself to the ground. Um, and you definitely don't want to do 20 hours, three hours, 20 hours, three hours, 20. You're putting yourself in anaerobic state, emotionally, psychologically, and otherwise. And you're, you're going to, you're heading to crash, right? Mm -hmm. And when you feel that way, it's easier to start thinking bad about yourself. Like, why am I not getting things done? What's happening to my performance, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you ran yourself into the ground, right? Um, the whole diet piece, you know. When I listen to a lot of the individuals who are in this place, usually when I when I ask when I start talking about their diet, it starts to tell the story. And I'm just being real here. I'm not candy coating, right? When I start hearing the consumption of alcohol being involved, you know, I know a lot of people have fallen into a place where they use alcohol to kind of solve their their tension, solve their anxiety, solve their issues. You're basically running away from your problems when you start doing that. And you know, the alcohol becomes a means to escape. You don't want to be in that place. Um, burger King and pizza every single day. Look, it's going to take its toll. You're going to start feeling like a burger. You know, it's, it, it, it is, you are what you eat. So you're going to start feeling that some kind of way about stuff. You're going to feel more sluggish. You're going to feel more tired. You're not going to have the energy when you really want to um, dive deep um, or do a deep dive to get something done. You're not going to have the resource to do it because physically your body is telling you no, your mind is saying yes, but the body's like, no, I can't do this, right? I'm not about that life right now. Um, so, you know, that's some of the things that I think about, right? Mm -hmm. um, I love our conversations with Shelly. I love the conversations I have with entrepreneurs, period, because um, I do isolate a lot. But having workout partners and having conversations with other entrepreneurs that are can-do people, that are positive, that are having success, right? That are solving problems. Um, they, they are providing solutions. Those things are important, right? And you know, you know I got a laundry list, but I'm press pause for a moment. <laughs> well, I think too, it's important. I wanna also address that like, I also feel that in recent, well, it's probably come to a head, especially this year too, but like, there's also this other glorified version of entrepreneurship where it's like, um, well, like hustle culture, right? You got to hustle your ass off, yep. right? And that, yep. like, like you said, that you're, <laughs> there are absolutely going to be days, moments, stretches of time where that happens. 
But if you well, are in a, if you're in a place where where you're you're not having to work 20 hour days, congratulations, that's great. And you're having success. That's not like, I want to also clarify, like that's not the goal of entrepreneurship. The goal of entrepreneurship is not to be working all the time. The goal of entrepreneurship is not to be like that you don't have any sort of outlet or that you're not doing anything else but this, right? Um, Like I know we talk about like, yes, work-life balance is a weird phrase and it's hard to find like whatever that actually means. But if you're in a place where you're successful, your life looks great, you're set yourself up really well, everything's going well, and you're not burnt out, congratulations, that's good, right? It doesn't mean you need to start adding more on. It doesn't mean you're not doing enough, right? Because I also, sometimes I have those moments where things are going well, or I have stresses of time where I find myself actually doing less, but receiving more. And Yes. I question myself, even in those moments, I question myself of like, well, then I gotta, I gotta ramp up. Why, mm. why do I do that? Right. You know, like enjoy the fact that it's working as well. And that's also <laughs> lean into that more because there might be moments in the very near future where it's not. So when you can mm. take that time for yourself, for your mental health, for your well being, for your body, everything where things are going well, they are like, don't just question it and think, well, that means I got to, I got to add more on my plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fall in love with the process and not the results all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we know being an entrepreneur is kind of like the stock market. People used to ask me all the time as an investment advisor, what's well, the stock market going to do? Well, it's going to do what it's always done. It's going to go up and it's going to go down. <laughs> well, guess up as, as an entrepreneur, it's going to go up and it's going to go down. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, be excited, enjoy the moment, discipline your disappointment, uh, disappointments, stay committed to the process and not the results, right? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the bottom line is the bottom line, but it's the process that gets you there. And it's really easy to fall into a sunken place when your process doesn't give you the results that you're looking for. Sometimes you just one more moment, one more yes, one more client, one more conversation away from having a breakthrough, right? Be aware of that. Um, you know, something that I talk to team members I work with a lot is guarding your thoughts, mm-hmm. right? Guarding your thoughts. And what do I mean by that? Look, got to cut back on that social media, man. Particularly if you have a feed that's full of negativity, you got to, you got to cut back on that. Um, it's just, I don't delete people. I'm not one of those individuals, right? Uh, just because we have a disagreement, but if you got some negativity going on, if you got some nihilism going on, I mean, if I can tell, you just, you know, you're just a negative person. I, I'm going to somehow remove you from my feed, right? Cause I, I can't consume that. I can't have that in my life, right? Um, I think about conversations you have with people. I avoid conversations with people who are blaming everyone but themselves. You know, I do. I avoid conversations with people where they start the day negative, the middle of the day is negative, the night is negative. You got to guard yourself against that stuff. Um you have to guard yourself against um, maybe even some of the stuff you're watching like, or listening to. And I'm serious. I'm talking about the music you're listening to or t- even sometimes the television shows. Like one of my favorite shows of all time, unabashed about it, was The Wire. I loved The Wire. But I had fallen to this habit where because I was working all the time and constantly doing stuff, I ended up watching The Wire at about 11 o'clock, mm-hmm. which is right before I went to sleep, right? And so I'd wake up the following day and I'd be aggressive for no reason. Right. I'd be mad for right. no reason. Yeah. yeah. And I finally put the two together. I was like, wait a minute. I'm not looking at my goals and my objections and the things that make me happy anymore. I'm watching The Wire before right. I go to sleep and I'm waking up on one. And yeah, we can smirk and laugh about it now, but there's a lot of truth to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what you put in, you get out. So. No, I'm all about also doing things that put you in a place where you avoid falling into that place as well. So, you know, guard your thoughts, guard your thoughts, um, guard your, um, don't have conversations that involve you giving away your power. And I'll give you a, a case in point. And particularly when you have Black Lives Matter hitting the street. And I used to tell entrepreneurs all the time, don't get it twisted. 
Um, I know entrepreneurs, uh, I know racism exists. Discrimination exists. These things are real. I mean, it's as American as, 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 as apple pie, okay? It's, it's United States of America's birth defect. It was here at its birth. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, right? But at the same time, my children still have to eat. I still have to be productive. I still have to be successful. I can't wake up every single day thinking about racism. That can't be on the top of my mind. But that's being on top of my mind is winning and doing what I need to do to succeed and put myself in a position on a chessboard where I can be of influence, where I can make a move that can open doors or do things for other people or put myself in a position to actually strike a blow against it. But, and that's what I mean when I say guard yourself. Don't, you know, I told someone the other day, it's like, yeah, I know it exists. Yeah, black men are catching hell right now. Okay, whatever. I get it, but I'm not about to live here with you right now. Because the bottom line is I got a couple of appointments that need to be ran. I got I to gotta execute on a couple of things because worrying about racism, once again, is not going to give my children the best chance of success, not going to allow me to do the things I need to do to keep maintaining household and, quite frankly, maintain my own sanity. And so, yeah, look, there are things that are going to happen in your life that are out of your control. I tell people, focus on the things you can control, right? Focus yeah. on the things that you can manage. Um because you're watching the news all the time. And I forgot psychological, psych, what they call it in psychiatric studies. But when you watch the news all the time and you're seeing constant negativity, it makes it look like that things are so bad, that things are so big, that you are helpless, that it is hopeless. There's nothing you can do to change the circumstances that you're looking at on the television set. And if you're identifying your world with that space, I mean, that's where you're at, right? Mm -hmm. um, you want to focus on things that are for the good because there are good things happening. You want to focus on the things you can control. You want to track your small successes, your small wins. Everything doesn't have to be a home run, right? Um, sometimes the steps you took to get to that home run, celebrate those steps along the way to avoid feeling some kind of way about your life and specifically as an entrepreneur about how things are going in your business. Yeah. I think another thing to remember too is that in the, in the same aspect with social media that yes, absolutely. You, your, your feeds or whatever you're looking at, whatever content you're consuming, um, you don't have to consume anything that's not worthwhile for you to consume. It, it does you yeah. can get, you just get rid of it. Don't do that. But um, also remembering that social media is a highlight reel at all times, even when people yeah. are vulnerable, even when people share their struggles, even when, people get real and authentic. It is still a highlight reel. Okay. So if you are in a place where you're feeling shitty or in your, and it is very easy to start consuming more content when you're in that place, because you're just mindlessly scrolling through your phone, it's not going to make you feel better to see everybody's huge success Oh, they're doing well. Oh, they're on it. Oh, look, this person's showing up on stories every day. They've got their posts up. Oh, they're, they're landing clients. They're doing this. And I'm just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's a highlight reel. Remember that. Why, why would they? It, there's no real incentive for someone to tell, to share with you. They're sitting there, you know, when they're all in their thoughts, right? Even when, even when things get shared authentically and transparently, it's important to keep in mind that there's always an agenda too, to that, mm. right? You know, some, especially if it's like an influencer that you're, or someone who has a big account, there's usually a reason behind why they've all of a sudden decided to be super transparent around what they're, they're saying or whatnot. That's not to say it's got to always be negative. It's not necessarily a negative reason, but um, even positive content can feel a little toxic if you're in a place where you're feeling like you're not doing enough, being enough or are enough. Mm -hmm. Um. There's something I like to share with individuals, particularly, and I think I've made a post about this a couple of days ago. It was like, look, if you're not born on third or second base, um, and quite frankly, if you're in a situation where you weren't even born for bat, right? You were like on the block hitting rocks with a broomstick, right? That's that's the place you were born in. Don't look at it as how far you have to go, but how far you have to grow, mm -hmm. right? And 
you can get excited about your growth. You can get excited about your progress and you can track those things, the things that you're learning. Um, the other thing that I guess I would encourage people to do is, it's gonna sound redundant, right? Because we're gonna say this a million different times, a million different ways, but get around positive influences. You know, for me, podcasts, more and more of my time is being spent on social media because more and more of my time is spent actually in podcasts and listening to things that actually build me, that give me strength, that equip me with the tools I need to overcome my problems, right? Um, you might not be surrounded by people who are potential, well, I shouldn't say potential. You might not be surrounded by people who could be mentors for you. Let's just face it. Um, look, I grew up on West Side, Detroit, um, you know, came up around Joy Road, Chicago, and um, shit, Burt Road, Evergreen. Okay. There wasn't a lot of mentorship there <laughs> when I was coming up, right? Uh, it was the wrong mentorship, let's put it that way. Um, so the bottom line is um, you might not have those mentors around you, but look, you can talk to John C. Maxwell every single day if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can talk to Tim Ferriss every single day if you want to. Hey, you want to talk to Andrew Yang, you can talk to him every single day if you want to. That's someone that you aspire to and you respect. Um, anyone who you aspire to and expect, most of these people have podcasts. They have audios. They have things that you can listen to. So if you're not surrounded by the right type of people, you can access the right type of people very easily. That's the beautiful thing about technology, right? And you can, something that I'll do from time to time is I'll read what other people are reading. I'll go online and look at people's reading lists or I'll go online and I'll look at a book from an author that I really respect and see what else he's written, right? Um, you have the Tim Ferriss of the world and people who are of that ilk. And they'll share where they're, who they're learning from. And mm -hmm. I'll go find those individuals and I'll listen to them, right? So I may not have leaders who are immediately accessible to me right at my fingertips or available via Zoom or via phone, but I can find leadership, right? Find that, do that for yourself. Um, find people who have stories of transcendence, right? People who started from rock bottom, get energy from that, eat the fruit, spit out the seed. Everything might not be applicable to where you live, but something's gonna be there for you, right? So that's something that, you know, I encourage people to consider. And then there's a book that I, I just suggested for the organization, um, Napoleon Hill, Outwitting the Devil. I think I referenced that book during one of our last discussions, right? I read that book ever so often. And it, and it really just talks about how idle mind is like, it's like a, a fertile ground for the, the devil's work, right? One of the most important things you can do as an entrepreneur is keep your goals, keep your... Um, your affirmations, keep those things accessible. Like right now, negativity is very accessible. All I gotta do is hit a button, trust me, it's gonna be there, okay? Matter of fact, now when you turn on the phone, now they have it where they force you to look at the news. They have like news highlights on your phone, right? Right. So it's right there. Yeah, turn off all of those notifications, all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you can find it. Right. And if you think about it, that means every time I'm picking up my phone, I'm picking up a, a portal into negativity, mm -hmm. I am. Right. So one thing that I have my phone, my screensaver is actually my affirmations. Mm -hmm. So I have to look at my affirmations a million times a day. So I'm picking up the phone a million times a day. Right. When I look at my appointment book, when I look at my screensaver, um, if I walk into the bathroom, my affirmations are everywhere. That's something I encourage people to occupy your mind with. So it doesn't become a cesspool for other negativity and other things that might not be a good look or, or may not be positive for you. And I, once again, I'll press pause, Shelly. You know, I can go on and on. I got like six other <laughs> items on the to-do list. But, you know, those are some of the things I was thinking about when I was having these conversations with people. Yeah. It ebbs and flows, you know. Um, I think it's also important to um, remember that this, the risk that you took to, to do what you're doing, the, the motivation and confidence and the, and the big leaps that you took to do what you're doing now, you are also always, always in a position because you are an entrepreneur to change it. And if it is not working anymore, if it is not 
serving you anymore, then in the same way you took that leap and it was scary, under, remind yourself that if you don't make a change now, it's going to be way scarier, right? And it, yeah, like it's going to be way scarier for your future if you don't take these risks that are going to make you feel better, that are going to make your life better, that are going to maybe still be challenging and hard, but are going to benefit you in the future. It's okay to also acknowledge that what you started isn't serving you now and it needs to change. It needs to evolve. It needs to be something different. I think that's another part of what happens when I see a lot of entrepreneurs get to this point or business owners is that the passion they had for what they started isn't there anymore, Mm -hmm. but they're, they're too committed to let it go. Mm -hmm. Um, Not realizing that by letting it go, you can do something even better. Mm -hmm. So not just for yourself, but your community and whatever, you know? So that's important too, is that it's not, it's not necessarily always the feeling like, well, then I quit or I, I, I've, I've failed. Right. I pretty sure you can look at every single entrepreneur that you admire and they left something behind at some point they had to, you know, and I'm sure that wasn't easy for anyone to do. Um, but that, but if they had kept going in a pace that wasn't serving them anymore, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, um, they would have never become the person that you're looking up to anyway. Yeah. I mean, I have children. So of course, times when I think about metaphors and anecdotes, I think about it from what I see observing my children, mm-hmm. right? And I can still remember um, when each one of my children started walking for the first time. And the question I pose to individuals is this, what if a baby decided I'm not going to walk because I don't want to scuff me, right? I don't want to fall. A baby, yeah, I'm going to fall, so I'm going to stop trying. What if a child reached the point where they say, you know what, this gravity thing, I'm not feeling it. I'm not, about, <laughs> I'm not trying to stand up because it's gravity. Uh, it's inevitable. And look, I'm just going, nah, I'm, I'm all good. I'm going to sit right here and just drag my diaper across the floor. That's, that's what I'm going to do, right? Um, what if children woke up and basically said, because people are watching me, I'm not going to take these first steps because I'm being watched. And I don't, I'm afraid that people might feel some kind of way or laugh at me. The bottom line is babies don't concern themselves with any of that. Mm-hmm. They're like cookies up on the counter. And I got to stand up to get it, <laughs> right? right. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of getting left behind in this baby seat, in this stroller and on the couch. I'm about to learn how to walk across this room and get this hug or this attention that I want, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I fell, okay, it's not broken. I'm about to get up and do it again, right? Um, as adults, you know, the, we, we become sometimes I wonder whether I'm becoming more or less intelligent sometimes, right? Um, but just think about it from that standpoint, man. Failure is part of the process. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, it's not, it's not on the opposite end of success. Failure is how you get to success, right? Uh, you don't want to become very good at failure now. You don't want to become a specialist at it. But <laughs> understand that that is part of your process and it's okay. Um, once again, you know, I, I love technology now because now we can see what people looked like five, 10, 20 years now. You can see how they were getting down, right? And what they were really doing. And you just got to know that these curated, um, incredibly veneered individuals that you're seeing on television and social media now, that's not how they started. They had an ugly ducking stage and they bust their face a million different times, right? To get to where they're at now. And don't get it twisted. At each level, there's a new devil right? There's a new challenge. There's a new something that you have to overcome. So they're still getting their teeth kicked in. It's just the people that we continue to read about and see, continue to strive and become successful is they're just doing more of the same, right? They've gotten accustomed to pushing through the trials and tribulations. They develop the emotional and psychological dexterity, and they're following a lot of the things that we're talking about now, right? Um, Look, entrepreneurs who are successful, they don't breathe different air. They're not 
trust me, majority of them are no more into, some of them can't spell the word doorknob. I promise you. Right. Okay. <laughs> They're not particularly more talented or gifted. The most successful entrepreneurs just got to get a couple things right. They stick to those things. Um, they, they have a good circle around them. They have good people around them. They know to do that. Um, it's just these simple things. So don't feel like you're less than because you don't have a particular talent or skill or you don't have a particular whatever, right? That's, that's not real. The, the, most, the millionaire living next door is an everyday Joe, just like you. They just have different habits, different thought processes, different ideals. And the thing about being human is we're not trees, right? We're not stuck. We don't have to just weather the storm. You can literally uproot yourself, get your legs, and literally physically or even psychologically put yourself somewhere else and put yourself in a different space. And I guess that's what I would encourage people to understand. And that's what I share with a lot of individuals who I'm having these conversations with. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to shift, change, adjust your surroundings, adjust all of that, especially if you're in a place currently that, um, you know, isn't serving you. I would also say too, it's like, and you mentioned this earlier on is that, um, even though we're talking about all kinds of changes that you can make to make yourself feel better or make your situation better. Sometimes it is just something very, very small that you start right now. Like I'm definitely in a place where I'm trying to curate these small habits that lead to long-term better habits, like keeping track of how much water I drink, you know, mm-hmm. especially in relation to how much coffee I drink, <laughs> um, you know, keeping, yeah. uh, I spent time this weekend reorganizing this office to give myself a space where I'm also um, have like a standing desk. So I'm stand, you know, I'm not sitting here all day long or um, I'm forcing myself to move my body a little bit more. Um, you know, so it's not that they have, to, you know, maybe it's just making your bed in the morning, having that one thing done. So it's not always about these, uh, well, those big transformations. If you're waiting for this aha moment to happen, right? Because that's, what it appears, right? That's what it appears, especially when people talk about it, that all of a sudden something happened, this clarity emerged and they were fine and everything was good, right? Well, it's hard to summarize the experience of little habits and steps into an Instagram post. And it's much sexier to talk about, I woke up one day and it was great. My, my, I finally had this, I finally came to this realization when you finally come to some of those realizations, it's because you've put in a lot of little work to get to that point where your mind is ready for it, where your body mm-hmm. is ready for it. Um, mm-hmm. So drinking enough water, moving every hour, getting dressed for the day, those are huge accomplishments that you should thank yourself for that will benefit you in the long run for your mental health into big, big, Mm -hmm. big changes a month from now, three months from now, a year from now. I concur 100%. Um, And, you know, it's interesting, you know, we're ending where we kind of began, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And create some small wins for yourself. They don't have to be big, gargantuan goals. Um, Create a list of just three things you're going to get done. Not today, this week. Just three things you're going to get done this week. Not big gargantuan things, just three little simple tasks that'll get you a little bit closer to your goal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, start there. And definitely protect your ears, protect what you're letting inside your mind. You know, I tell people all the time, and I'm, 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 I'm becoming more and more comfortable with this, and things have improved. And for me, it was like a hurdle I needed to get over. You have to, man, it's expensive. The rent's expensive between my ears. It really is. You got to, man, you got to be paying some hella rent to be occupying space in my mind. So, because my goals and my dreams and my responsibilities, if you cannot hear the kids screaming in the background now, those things are huge to me, right? So, you got to pay rent to be here. And that means thoughts, books, people, episodes, things going on in the world. You, it it needs to be very, very important. He said the price for admission is really high. 
And what I want to encourage people to do is make sure that price for admission is really, really high in terms of who and what you would inside your mind and your thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. um, be very self-aware about that. And, you know, I just firmly believe if you focus on some of these things, um, it'll be a lot, there's a less likelihood that um, you'll find yourself at a place where you're contemplating um, depression and, and dealing with those type of issues. So, yeah. On that note, feel free to share with us. You're welcome to email us and talk to us. We're, we're happy to talk with you about it. Um, at info at nextstopsocial.com. If you want to email us, if you want to comment under this video, share with us on social media, share with this with someone that maybe you know is struggling. Um, I'll be honest, if you can share this with someone you know that might be struggling, them realizing that you're thinking of them and offering some help is a huge, a huge benefit in itself. So um, with that, we will see you all next week.